lost two wrestlers within a span of a week. Now, forgive me, I'm getting to one of them a little bit late. And it's like, the more you think about when people pass away, especially people that you grew up watching or idolizing or even acknowledging to a certain point, you kind of start reflecting upon your own age. Um, the first person that I'm going to talk about is Chavo Guerrero Sr., or otherwise known as Chavo Classic. And you cannot talk about wrestling, really, or especially Lucha, without mentioning the name Guerrero. You, you, you just can't, okay? You know, notably him and his brother. I mean, come on. He was trained by his father, Gory. Gory Guerrero. And, of course, there are his brothers. You know, Hector, Mondo, and the late Eddie Guerrero who had the WWE Championship at one point. And, of course, you know, Chavo Sr., as, you know, the good wrestler that he is, yes, he took his father's signature, the Gory Special, he used to use the Moonsault, and it's like, man, he was even WWE Cruiserweight Champion, you know, in his later years, and I think 2004. So, his, you know, legacy will always live on through the Guerrero name, and there's still his son that's still, you know, active in wrestling, and it's like, man, to lose him, uh, you know, all right, he died at the age of, age of 68, and it's like, man, his father died at the age of 69. It, it's like, wow, man, that time frame is like, ugh. And he was the oldest of his brothers. And, again, it's, it's, it's very, very sad to even talk about this or even see things like this but yeah he he lived a good life he lived a long life and as i said his legacy will always live on especially with the guerrero name now i i hope that wwe puts him in the hall of fame because he's not in the hall of fame yet but what i would like them to do is put the guerreros in the hall of fame as a as a group i know eddie is already in there but the others are not now, Chavo, he's still, you know, but I would like to see the Guerreros get that acknowledgement because they deserve it. Rest in peace, Chavo Sr. Rest in peace, Chavo Classic. Now, the other one is George the Animal Steel. Now, growing up watching him, first of all, he had a career, a span of 30 years. He was a brutal heel, and he he earned that moniker, the animal. Not like Batista, where they just gave to him, they called him the animal Batista. No, George the Animal Steel was one of those guys, especially one of those. He, he was managed by classy Freddie Blassie. That should say enough right there. Freddie Blassie managed some of the best, <laughs> especially as a heel. He, he just did. And, man... He had a. He used to use the trademark green tongue. I think he did like with like um, maybe lozenges or something like that. He had a green tongue, and he used to bite. He used to you know do crazy things like an animal would do, and most notably in the ring he would fuck up the turnbuckle. He would rip over the turnbuckle and the fucking <laughs> every the, the, the shit would go everywhere, and it used to be that much comedy especially when he turned face finally but before that yeah he was a brutal freaking heel he even was challenging for the freaking championship the wwf championship he did that a number he viewed it with bruno san martino he again he was one of those guys that paved the way for heels for good heels for monster heels <laughs> and then when he turned face his best feud as a face was with the Macho Man Randy Savage. He feuded with him for over a year over the Intercontinental Championship from WrestleMania 2 to 3, really. And he was in the corner of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat during that fucking match <laughs> at WrestleMania 3. And he always had a little thing for Elizabeth and, you know, carrying her off or stalking her and acting like an animal. So, those are two 
great iconic wrestlers. And George and the Animal Steel is already in the Hall of Fame. So even though he never won a championship in WWE or WWF, he is still he was still a household name, especially you know in the seventies and the eighties. I mean, come on, he again he was one of those guys that was brutal as a heel, and he was soft and sweet as a face. You you could hate him and you can love him, and that's what characters are made of, especially a long time ago. You had these guys that was so embedded with their character. That's who they were. That's who they so that, and they could sell their characters well. You believed everything that was going on with these people as their character, whether you cheered or booed them. And George the Animal Steel was one of those guys that actually convinced you about what everything that was going on and everything that he was doing, and he earned his name, the Animal. It's just sad to see or even talk about these guys passing away and my condolences go out to their friends and family but again thank you guys for the memories as a wrestling fan growing up watching or even going back and seeing their old stuff or even like yeah again they remind me on why I became a wrestling fan in the first place as far as watching them as far as listening to them as far as being embedded with their character loving them or hating them they are the reasons, they are the ones that paved the way. And once again, thank you for the memories. Rest in peace.